We're a sugar beet processing cooperative. We're based in Moorhead, Minnesota. We have five factories right here in the Red River Valley, which is the border of Minnesota and North Dakota. Uh, we process around 10 and a half or 11 million tons of sugar beets a year into around 3 billion pounds of sugar, give or take. We're primarily an industrial supplier of sugar. We do some retail, and so it will show up in the grocery stores in, in several states, but for the most part, we supply America's food manufacturers, and, and, I, and I've calculated it that, that if you go buy a grocery product that includes sugar, there's a better than 50-50 chance you're going to be eating American Crystal sugar in that product. Now, American Crystal became a farmer-owned cooperative uh, 40 years ago because it looked like we were about to lose the industry. We bought the company, and then we improved it. And then we put money into research and we, we made it a lot better. But the key thing is sugar beets fit so well in this, on this farm and in this valley that it's, it's critically important. But then we found out we were pretty good at it and it's become an economic driver. We focus on being the very best producer of sugar that we can possibly be. That means we start with the soil and with the growers who own that soil and work that soil. We help them raise the best crop possible and the farmers who own this company see the company as an extension of their own farm operations. Stewardship is something that we farmers do naturally. We can't help but to do it naturally because the most important resource that we work with is the land and we need the land to be very productive, in very good health. At every step of the process, from, from uh, field preparation all the way through harvest and beyond the tillage afterwards, you have to be extremely specific on what you're doing. So precision agriculture is something that's been a term around here for at least 15 or 20 years, way before it got cool. It's so natural. American Crystal as a cooperative and the, the crops we grow and the people that, that do that here work together so well. Uh, the crop belongs here, uh, we do it well. In fact, we're, we're the most efficient sugar beet producing area in the world. That allows these farms, these valley farms, a huge advantage to do something that's sort of a niche crop uh, that couldn't be done otherwise. So there is no short-termism here whatsoever. Uh, the incentive is very strong, the drive is very strong. I mean, it's, it's a mandate to make sure that we're making investments for the long term. So when we're thinking about stewardship, we do things not because, you know, oh, I can, I can shave a few pennies off a of cost this year so that I can put it into the farmer's pockets. We do it, we make decisions almost the other way, saying, I want to sustain this place for the long term because the farmers expect me to have it around for the long term. One time sitting in a strategic planning meeting, and I'm talking about the finances of the company long term and our investments and things like that, one of the directors of the co-op said, I just had my first grandchild handed to me uh, just about three weeks ago. And he said, and I want to know what you're doing to make sure that he can deliver sugar beets when he turns 25 years old. Uh, and and I, was, I was just moved, I mean emotionally shaken right there. Because when you think about most companies today and their quarterly earnings pressure, and this man's not thinking about the quarter of the year, he's thinking about the quarter of a century or, or sustainability on into the future for many generations. And now that young man is four years old but he's riding around in his grandpa's tractor, and I'm sure that he, he knows what sugar beets are, and he probably can't wait to raise his own first crop of sugar beets.